to another Sims 4 Speed Build video. So this is my second ever video and we're doing something fun today, something a bit different. So this is a semi-detached set of houses. So this is two houses on one lot and my inspiration for this build was most of the houses that you see in England. So this is what a typical person, at least in the north of England, this is what their house would look like. So you sort of have the two houses joined together and then people normally have uh, an alleyway or a garage or something down the other side and then there'll be another set of these houses and then another one and another one all the way down to the end of the street. So putting the windows in now I'm not sure what it's like in America or other countries, but no one has shutters in England. I don't know why, just no one ever does. It's because the sun hardly ever shines, so why would you need shutters? <laughs> uh, we just have blinds or curtains. So, right, the houses. I tried to do them a bit different to each other. Uh, I know they're on the same lot and that, but I just um, I thought it'd be nice doing them a bit doing two different houses it's not just the same thing so we have the one that I'm on the left the one that I've already done the the bricks on one floor and the paint on the other that is more of a modern house on the inside and then the other one the entire red brick one on the right is uh, it's a bit more old-fashioned it's it's a bit shabby chic maybe something that uh, you might something that I'd imagine say my nan to to live in I think and the idea is you can have just one sim family living in one of the houses you can just completely delete the other one if you want or you can build two very different families and they can live in a half each you just have to lock the doors to do that or you could have maybe say a mom and dad and kids living in one and then the nan and granddad living next door quite a lot of people i know do do that so here right i'm trying to make it look like that was the back and then this white bit, this conservatory, is like an extension but of course I've had to get the window taken out because you wouldn't just have a window from like one room to another room in your house so that's why I've used the half wall there and I do actually have that in my house I do have like a half wall thing where the old window used to be and then they've added the conservatory on, got rid of the window and, and done this so I've tried to make it as realistic as possible and I thought what well, might be a bit fun, I mean you don't have to do this but if you did play this lot uh, maybe they could have like a rivalry going on so um, say one of the sims from one of the houses uh, and one of the sims from one, the other house they each try and outdo each other particularly in their gardens I think that does happen a lot in real life like everyone tries to have a better garden than the neighbours and they have the house trying to they try and make their house look the nicest on the whole street so, so when people drive past they go oh that house is nice and they want to have the best house at least like the people I know who live in houses like this do that so that would be something a bit fun, a bit different. Now, obviously, like, if you do fill both these houses, there's going to be eight sims. And it's quite a small lot for eight sims. It's quite cramped. Now, normally with sim houses, I make them quite big. Uh, so the sims have loads of room. But because this is based off real life, most people can't afford a big, massive mansion. So you have this sort of size house. So you will see that uh, it's, it's kind of small, a bit cramped. And I, I've sort of put lots of furniture into a small space, but I have played with it, and I have played with with eight Sims, four in each house, and it's a little bit hectic, but it it works. Like you can have a normal game with both houses filled with four Sims. So the the houses they're sort of a mirror image of each other, which is how it will be in real life. Uh, they'd be sort of the same layout but flipped. So that's what we've got here, and one of them. They each have three bedrooms, so it's six bedrooms in total, which is quite a lot, I suppose. One of them is for a mum, a dad, a teenage boy, and a child who's a girl. And then the other one is for twin toddlers, because you love toddlers. I, uh, I need to stop putting toddler bedrooms in all my houses, because everyone's going to be like, Charlotte, stop, we don't have toddlers anymore. Everyone's over that now, but <laughs> I haven't really played with toddlers, so I just, I think it's because I normally just play with one sim so I put toddler stuff in and it's it's still really cute to me it's I think it's adorable so right the the gardens I think that this garden 
suits the other house better. So I think that the more old-fashioned house has a slightly more modern garden, but that's because of the conservatory, which takes up a lot of room. So I didn't have much room for the modern house for the garden, but the other one had quite a lot, so we get like a pond in there and stuff. So that looks really cool, but it is quite quite modern for the house. But anyway, you'll see when we get to it. But I hope that you still like it. Uh, this is something really different. I wouldn't normally do something like this. I normally just build like big, massive mansions for loads and loads of Sims to live in. And uh, even though I don't really play with loads and loads of Sims, oh, so just putting in garden gnomes. I absolutely love garden gnomes. Everyone in England has garden gnomes or fairies or something in their garden. I think they're really sweet. You can get some quite funny ones as well. So here we're putting on the old front door, and basically the porch is has been put on. So we should have that little area. Porches stay empty just because the doors are too wide. If they weren't, I'd have put something on, like like them little shoe racks or something. I'd have put them in. But um, I decided to just leave it empty because it would have been blocking the door if you put anything in there. But Anyway, you'll see. So the left house is open plan. Uh, it's it, Yeah, it's open plan. So it's... um. The, the right one has got walls in downstairs though, so that's slightly different. The, the more, like the old fashioned house, it has like a kitchen and a living room and a dining room all separate. The one on the left, it's more open, but I suppose because they have the conservatory as well and that's like another living room, I was sort of imagining that if someone was cooking, you'd watch telly in the conservatory, so as, I, I mean I suppose you still get sound because of the half wall, but as uh, as well, like I thought, mm, well, there's only really the mum and dad, because the toddlers are going to stay upstairs, so I didn't think it mattered as much. That it was more open plan, but you know what? It's The Sims. They're not actually going to be bothered by someone cooking in the kitchen and it interrupting the telly. It doesn't actually affect The Sims. So I went for a different colour scheme for each house. So the more old fashioned one on the right is more white. So like the stairs and the, uh, what do you call it, banister. That's what we call it in England, I don't know what you call it. But like the, the railing on the stairs and the doors and the windows are white. And then the more old fashioned house, I went for like a dark brown, not old fashioned house, the modern house, I went for a dark brown wood. I don't know why. Mm, actually, if I think about it, right. Tom's house, well, Tom's mum's house, it's very, very modern. It's like a new built house. And they have loads of dark brown wood everywhere. And then my house is is slightly older. It's it was built in like the sixties, and that's got white windows and doors and stairs. So I think I mean I didn't purposely do it because of that, but I think that sort of influenced it. When I think of like modern houses, I think dark brown wood, and then when I think of like not old old houses, but like older houses, I think of them having like white windows and white stairs and white doors. So that's just what I was going for. Hey, that's an idea. I might build like a really old fashioned house, like a really old like Victorian house because I used to live in a Victorian house when I was like a child and I think it was a really gorgeous house. That might be something nice to build because they're quite ornate and they've got quite a lot of decoration, decorative things in the actual building themselves so I think that might be a cool thing to try and build. So today I have been to the football match and I am an Everton supporter, Evertonian. So I went to Goodison Park and I actually have a season ticket for the match. So I go with my dad, my granddad and my sister, Jess. We sit in the lower Gladys. So if there's any Evertonians watching, give us a shout out in the comments. <laughs> yeah, so um, I watched the match today. Uh, it is the 30th of April today. Sunday so we played Chelsea and oh, I was a bit disappointed with the score we lost by 2-0 but uh, yeah mm, Chelsea are quite good and you know you, you can't win them all <laughs> but yeah the, the pitch was really slippery today so there's this player who's called Lukaku and he's quite good he's, he's like quite a good player but he um he, we start, he started it off and he was like running and he was like near the goal at the start and then he just like fell because it was all wet and slippery and then he got back up 
got the ball, carried on running, and then fell again and like landed like in a push up po position. Oh, I felt a bit sorry for him, but like obviously that's not why we lost because Chelsea also had to play in the wet conditions, so you know. I'm not like trying to make excuses or anything. It's, we didn't lose because it was wet. We just lose, lost because we, we didn't play well today. But yeah, I do like going to the football match though. And um, my uncle and my cousin also go, but they like sit in a different part of the stadium. But my uncle, oh my god, he's quite funny, right? We call him Uncle Dirtbox because I don't, I don't even know why. He's just like he's. Just, I, I don't want to say he's an idiot, but he's a bit of an idiot right and he just like I don't think his brain works in the same way as normal people's brains so we have quite a lot of funny stories about him I was wondering if I should tell you one yeah go on I'll tell you one I won't tell your uncle Dirtbox's real name because like he has a job and stuff and I don't want to get in trouble with his job like not not that he would get in trouble like he's not anything illegal or anything but like just yeah some of the stuff he does is kind of stupid and I, j I just won't tell you his name so this Uncle Dirtbox, he's great and he's hilarious. It's, it's just his brain works in a different way to normal people. So let's see. Let's think. So I have loads of stories. Now I promise that everything I will tell you about Uncle Dirtbox will be 100% true. I get, he's done so many silly things that I don't even need to embellish it. I don't I don't need to make anything up or add anything on. It's just funny as it is. Well, I, I think it's funny. You may or may not think it's funny. So I'll start with one of the um, milder ones and then maybe in a few videos we'll come back to it and I'll tell you one of, you know, we'll start mild so I don't scare you all off and then I'll save the more shocking ones for a later date. So, right, Uncle Dirtbox, who actually lives in a house like this, by the way, <laughs> on a completely unrelated note, this is the sort of house that he has. So this one time... He goes out uh, with my dad. Him and my dad got on really, really well. It's not, it, it, it's not like blood related to us. So it's my dad's sister's husband, uh, and him and my dad get on really, really well. So they go out, uh, just just drinking, and then on the way back, he spotted this trampoline in someone's garden, like someone's front garden, at like three o'clock in the morning, and um. In his drunk state, he goes, oh, I, I, I want to go on the trampoline. But Dad's like, no, you, we need to go home. Uh, we, 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 You can't just go on this random child's trampoline in their garden. Like, we're, we're tired. It's like three o'clock in the morning. We're done with our night out. Everyone just wants to go home. And he goes, oh, you go ahead then. I'll go on this trampoline for five minutes and then I'll run and I'll catch you up. So my dad goes, oh, okay then. I don't, I don't even think it right. Most people just be like, no, you're an idiot. But this is like the sort of thing he does. And once he does it, you can't talk him out of it. So my dad just left him to go on this trampoline. And then after 20 minutes, my uncle still hadn't caught him up. So he tries ringing him and he doesn't answer his phone. So he says, ah, oh, I'm going to have to go back. So he leaves all his other friends he's walking with and he runs back. And he jogs back and he, he finds my uncle lay on the pavement. So he runs up to me and he's like, oh, you know, what? what's wrong? And my uncle, in his drunken state, had got on this trampoline, started to bounce, jumped, fallen off the trampoline, landed in a bush and broke his rib. He actually had broken two of his ribs. So my dad then walks him to the A&E unit, like near where they are. They just find the nearest A&E and take him there. Uh, that's That's... Uh, like the emergency room, you call it, in America or wherever you're listening. A&E, accident and emergency. So he takes him there and they're like, yeah, he's, he's broken two of his ribs. How did he do it? And I was like, oh no, we can't, we can't tell them that he like went into someone's garden and went on the trampoline. So he says, oh, he fell. Like, he'd fallen off the trampoline. And then, and then the nurse goes, oh, what, what did he fall off? So then my dad goes, oh, he fell off the curb, right? fell off the curb. I mean, I know people who have actually fallen off the curb before and really badly hurt themselves. Like, someone I know broke his foot falling off the curb. I mean, it sounds silly, but it's actually really quite dangerous. I've fallen off the curb before and cut my knee. It really hurt. So they tell the nurse that he's fallen off the curb. 
So then she straps him up, off the go, and then they get outside the hospital, and he actually fell off the curb outside the hospital after having just told the nurse that he fell off the curb and broke his rib when he had it. But he was he was fine when he fell off the curb. Like it, it didn't hurt him or anything. But it was just a bit ironic that he just lied and told the nurse, Oh yeah, I fell off the curb and then he actually fell off the curb. So yeah, so there's one of the milder stories about Uncle Dirt Box. So maybe in a, a later video I'll tell you some more. There's some um rather ridiculous ones. <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me for those. But yeah, I, I promise you it's all 100% true, all of the Uncle Dirtbox stories. I'm just not sure the way his, his brain works, to be honest. Yeah, so anyways, back to the build, because you know, this is a speed build video, so we should talk about the build. So I'm doing the conservatory. Now, I based this off my nan's conservatory because she recently got one put in and she has like wicker chairs you know like some people would have in like their garden maybe I don't know if you live in like a hot country where it doesn't really much so you won't, your wicker chair will get wrecked but in England it is quite cold and quite rainy so we have to put our wicker chairs in our conservatories and I've just put a hedge in as you can see and that's that's mainly because that's what people do. Like they put hedges in to like give themselves more privacy. So obviously, if you're sat in your conservatory, you don't want the neighbours also sat in their garden, like just being able to see you. That's not very private. So that's what the hedges are for. Uh, mainly just just to to block it out. And uh, my nan and granddad, <laughs> my nan and granddad were going crazy at one point. The other nan and granddad, this is. So the first nan and granddad are the ones who have the conservatory. The other nan and granddad got a conservatory put in. They did get one. And um, then their next door neighbour... This is what I meant about them having rivals with their next door neighbour when you're in a semi-detached house. Their neighbour saw their conservatory and then got one put in. Like the exact same one. But it was like an inch taller <laughs> my nan and granddad's and like an inch bigger like an inch longer and an inch wider obviously she's got the exact same house and the exact same garden so she just got the same conservatory but the tiniest bit bigger and my nan and granddad were going insane that she got this conservatory put in because then of course the the back garden there's like they're on a corner so it's not just like a line with people next to them it curves round and they have them like all round other people's houses can like see into their back garden so they try and have all these like trees that go over to give them some privacy but like they were going mad that all these people could could see that she'd got a slightly larger conservatory and they were saying oh everyone's gonna think that like we couldn't afford a bigger conservatory when really like we got ours first and we got the exact right size and then she just got an inch bigger in every direction for hers but I thought that was quite funny that that's like that's the most important thing that's happened in my nan and grandma's life that the neighbour got a similar conservatory to them but slightly larger so yeah I thought that was I thought that was quite funny that that's what they were going on about but yeah I thought that maybe like a sort of friendly healthy rivalry between the two households and their gardens would be quite an accurate representation well, of course, if if you like one house and not the other, then you can always delete half the house and maybe put in a more like a new garden or something. Or if you um if this build inspires you in any way to build anything with, that's like semi-detached, or say if you get it and you renovate one of the houses or both the houses or knock them through into one big house, let me know. I'll I'll link my Twitter and my Instagram below. Your best bet is to get me on Twitter, I think. Uh, Instagram, I don't really go on, mainly because all my house build pictures and stuff are on my computer, but you can't post to Instagram from your computer, or at least I don't think you can. I think you have to do it from your phone, so it's just a nightmare to get it on the computer, send it to the phone, and then upload it from my phone. Just, it's just easier to just put it on Twitter straight on the computer. So your best bet is to get me on Twitter. Uh, yeah, if, if you do anything, tag me. If you're a new YouTuber, 
and you want to do like a, a collab is that right collab yeah you want to do a collab let me know like I'll, I'll literally I'll do anything <laughs> give me as big or as small a build as you like and I'll do the inside or I'll do the outside I'll do landscaping I'll do decorating whatever you want I will do it <laughs> I am I don't I don't mind I'm not fussy if there's anyone interested in doing a collab like maybe just for a bit of fun or whatever I know I'm completely new so I'll have about one follower which will probably be my mum but um, <laughs> if, you were, if you, anyone fancies doing one just for fun, let me know. Just tweet me or send me a, a DM or let me know in the comments or whatever. I'd love to get in touch with some other like relatively new Sims YouTubers because hopefully we can like expand our channels at the same time, which would be great. And if I make a friend, we can do like quite a few columns over time, so that'd be nice. So yeah, if, if you are new to YouTube and you don't hate my builds or me and you would like to be friends then please do let me know I don't really have many internet friends already because um, I don't know I just don't really do that I don't really have there's nothing that I've ever done on the internet to like make friends through this is like one of my friends she has a Disney account so she makes friends She's made loads of friends with other people who have Disney accounts and then they go on holiday to Disneyland Paris together and stuff like that. But I've never, like, had an account other than just my personal one and no one adds me on my personal one who doesn't know me. So hopefully I can start to make some friends now with my new YouTube channel, which, fingers crossed, will go well. Um, are we, oh, we're getting near the end now. That's sad. I think we're going to jump into the screenshot. So I hope you've all enjoyed my second uh, speed build. Something a bit different. Uh, something that I have a lot of experience with. Like most houses in the north of England look like this. Like most streets will just be this repeated. But like slightly different. So like, you know, each person's garden will look different depending on what their own personal interest is. But most people in England will live in a house like this one. So I just thought I would share that with all the viewers from all around the world so don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you like me and my builds and i really really hope to see you all in my next video thank you so much for watching bye